It's Friday at week's end, and we've got some great stories on tap for you today. Let's take a look. Today, Brian Holman visits with Chad at Premier Farm and Home about options to control rabbits in your home gardens. Then we meet the last of K-State's master farmer, master farm homemaker couples, Leon and Janet Sylvester from Wamego, Kansas. Find out how they met and founded Sylvester Farm. And finally, we'll learn about the USDA's Blue Stem Pasture Survey for ranchers in the Flint Hills area and why this information is vitally important to the state. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Good morning and welcome to the show. We're out of Premier Farm and Home and we're joined by Chad. It's good to see you, Chad. Hey, you Brian. I'm doing great. Good. Hey, uh, okay, uh, we've gotten to this time of the year. I'm not going to say what time of the year it is, but it's that time of the year. It's that, that we're, time. <laughs> it's that time. Uh, we're probably going to put started putting some seedlings and some other stuff into the ground in right. our gardens and things like that. And it seems like we've got an explosion of rabbits. We do. Especially in neighborhoods. Uh -huh. um, how are we going to keep those rabbits out of our garden, well, besides having Elmer Fudd come. Yeah, we could yeah. go after those wascally wabbits <laughs> a little right. bit, you know, but what, what I'm looking for, um, there's probably three main ways that you can go about. Um, there's the trapping solution. There's one way that you can do it. You're just luring them into a thing. You're either gonna physically remove them from the area or whatever you need to do at that point. Um, one other way is there are some repellents, uh, kind of mixed reviews on whether or not they work or not or that sort of thing. And there's also physical barriers that you can put up to kind of prevent that. So um, it just kind of depends on what the situation is that you've got. I guess recommendation as far as is um, maintaining those. Probably the best thing to do when you're dealing with rabbits in town, I think, is to put up a real basic physical barrier. You can use something in the neighborhood of poultry netting. It doesn't have to be very high. And you don't even have to put a gate on it, Brian. You can actually just make it in kind of a, a, a perimeter around the garden where the two overlap so you have kind of a gap that you can walk through and pull your stuff through uh, short enough that you can drag your hoses over, whatever you need. And those rabbits just kind of run into it and they can't really find a way in. They just keep going in circles around it even though that gap's there. And if they happen to get in, they ain't coming out. So you may be able to catch them that way too. So to me, a uh, basic, Physical perimeter is probably the easiest thing to do when you're dealing with rabbits. And, I mean, they don't jump very high. No. And so, no, no. I mean, if we had something uh, 12 to 18 inches off the 18 ground. 18 inches would be great. You know, uh, poultry netting probably works the best with just simple electric fence posts or any kind of temporary step-in post. Mm -hmm. It's probably the easiest deterrent um, that you can do to do that. Um, there are some fancier stuff out there I've seen as well. There are some motion sensor sprinklers. Uh, that was probably the coolest thing I've right. seen in the last few years is they set out in the yard and then when there's any kind of motion, they just kick on and shoot whatever's there and then the rabbits run away and plus you water your garden all at right. the same time. So uh, there are some of those devices out, uh, kind of mixed reviews on that, whether the sensor's working or, you know, you, you know, grandma might come over and get sprinkled <laughs> by when she's right. not paying attention, right. but that's kind of some of the basic things that are out there. Uh, we don't only have to worry about rabbits, we, see, we also have to worry about deer also. Yeah, now deer, your little two foot fence, that's kind of out the window, Brian. That, that won't work for them. Um, with deer, it almost has to be a larger fence or it has to be a, um, you know, something to physically scare them out of there, whether that's, you know, lights coming on. But as we notice more and more of those deer just fear us less and less, right. especially in town. They just don't seem to care whether we're there or not. So with deer, it can be more complicated. Probably the biggest problem with deer, rather in the garden, it's probably actually young trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking to a nurseryman the other day, and he said they actually use uh, fabric softener or dryer sheets. Um, and they'll, they'll rub it down there. And so when those, those bucks are in rut and they're coming to scrape up the trees, um, they won't uh, take out the little sapling because their scent won't be put on it because you put fabric softener right. on it or uh, I'm sorry, dryer sheets. So they just rub the base of those young trees with dryer sheets. And that's probably the cheapest inexpensive way other than buying some retail stuff to, to go about it. What about uh, urine? I mean, they, is that another way to- They do use problem? that. Um, they'll use coyote urine as kind of a deterrent and that works for the rabbits as well. So kind of a dual purpose there, other than the fact you have to deal with the uh, coyote urine. Right. You know, that's, and and the, the, there is a little smell associated to that and the unpleasantness of just handling it, you know. Um, it's, it can be in good supply, it can be in short supply, it's kind of hard, and it's of course a perishable product, so it, uh, that 
is a little bit tricky, but it would work for sure. Don't yeah. keep it in your icebox. Don't keep it in the icebox. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, we want to remind everybody, sure. questions you have for Chad, please go to HeyCal.com, uh, or you can just come out and see him out here at Premier Farm and Home. So, Chad, thank you for your time thank today. Thank you. Appreciate it, Brian. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Car Waters has a huge selection and the best prices. Car Water Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Leon and Janet Sylvester each grew up in places other than the Kansas River Valley near Wamego in Pottawatomie County, where since the late 1970s they've built up a very successful crops and cattle operation, complemented with a well-established seed dealership and a custom farming operation. Leon and Janet met while attending and graduating from Kansas State University, and farming runs deep in each of their families. Accordingly, three of their four children remain active participants in Sylvester Farms. But Leon's farming roots were originally in neighboring Riley County, where in the 1960s the Sylvester family had to pull up stakes and seek a new home, lock, stock, and barrel. Leon, we might start with you. Where you're farming today and raising cattle as well is not the original family farmstead. Uh, that uh, that made a move here, what, back in the mid-60s? Yes, yeah, 66. Uh, the Fort Riley Military Re Reservation expansion uh, moved us uh, from south of Riley three miles, and it was quite a change because my family was, um, my grandfather's one of 12, and they all farmed in that area, so uh, it was uh, kind of scattered everybody to the wind, uh, to so, so to speak, and we were fortunate to relocate in this area, so, and my grandparents moved down here too, so it was, <laughs> we were able to, they came out every day, uh, you know, and, and raised a garden and, and helped with everything around the farm, so it's been a family farm for a long time. Janet, you were raised on a farm as well, not in the Pottawatomie County area, but in the Dickinson County area, right? That's right. I grew up on a farm northeast of Abilene, actually just a couple miles north of Detroit. Let's get into the operation as it's existing present day. It is diversified and it is partially irrigated, uh, mostly irrigated actually on the crop side. We farm a little over 2,000 acres. Of course, part of that's custom farming and uh, well part of it is still his mother's farm in Clay yeah. County his mother grew up on a farm in Clay mm -hmm. County and um, that farm is still in the family and they still go to Clay County to farm that your crop mix is the standard uh, you've irrigated corn beans wheat pretty much a routine mix here yeah pretty much I mean you know we've had sunflowers you know of course we're into you know trying to plant some cover crops to help the ground uh, and we're, you know, trying to get as much manure incorporated into the, you know, mix too as far as improving the fertility. Yeah. Most of the wheat is in clay yeah, in Dickinson counties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Janet, you were obviously a farm wife and active with a number of things here, but you were also a substitute teacher for many years. I was. Um, well, we got married and chose to stay home and learn to keep the farm records and books and um, the children came right along and um, got the call to see if I would come in and fill in a maternity leave for the 
facts teacher at that time. And I guess that began my 13 year career <laughs> of um, substituting regularly in the schools. Once the children graduated uh, from um, high school, then I took on a different role with the School to Careers grant, um, and that again was with the, well, it was with the Potawatomi Consortium, which included Wamigo and Rock Creek uh, schools. Um, and then for 12 years, I had been the Senior Interview Day Coordinator at Wamigo High School, and I just this is my first year not to do it in 12 years. <laughs> Leon, you've alluded to this a couple of times. The custom farming operations that you've taken on along the way. Actually, this has expanded into more than just a, a small sidelight with your operation, with your sons involved as well now. But to talk about the, the custom aspect of your operation, how you uh, eased into that and where it stands today. Of course, it kind of started out as a uh, custom spring. We were really wanting to, you know, be able to justify a, a, a better, larger sprayer. And uh, so in order to do that, we, you know, Aaron spend a lot, spends a lot of time, uh, you know, custom spraying. And of course, we do some planting and fertilizing for, it kind of helps us, you know, justify a little bit uh, nicer equipment, I guess. And of course, uh, um, you know, the new guidance systems and things now, it, it's a little easier to justify that too. And uh, and Andrew <coughs> plays a big role in the custom mm -hmm. grazing of That's cattle. Sure. He makes yep. those connections. Yeah, Andrew's got lots of connections. <laughs> so custom spraying, but custom farming even more broadly, you're providing some services beyond just the applications or? Well, of course, we custom harvest uh, as well as the planting and the fertilizing, and so it's yeah, we offer a you know um, full service, I guess. AGM in Kansas is brought to you in part by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. We've been using the multi men on our donor cows, and after we started using it on them, we've seen a definite increase in grade number one embryos. I like the results that I get using multi-men with the uh, AI conception rate. Their mineral's not up to snuff, you're gonna have problems, and I definitely think multi-men is good for, you know, general healthiness of the cattle. We think multi-men more than pays for itself. Dr. Dan here. Whether I'm driving up and down the roads covering the state of Kansas, or I'm getting between Riley and Manhattan for my job, I'm driving a Ford truck. I'd like you to come out and visit my friends here at Dick Edwards Ford. They have a truck that'll suit your needs, whether you're looking for power with a power stroke diesel, or if you're looking for fuel efficiency with the new EcoBoost engine, they got a truck that's just right for you. They're located two miles east of the Town Center Mall in Manhattan, Kansas, and they'll bend over backwards to help you. And I'll see you down the road. Get ready for the Kicker Country Stampede presented by Verizon Wireless. Starring Jason Aldean. Lavish Race Atkins. Four days of camping and country music at Country Stampede. Little Big Town. The Pistol Annies featuring Ashley Monroe, Miranda Lambert, and Angelina Presley. Country Stampede. Take advantage of our current pricing. Use Easy Pay to split up your payments. Save money through April 30th with early bird pricing. More info at CountrySTampede.com. Now, another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Early spring is the best time to plant many of the cool season garden vegetables for your dinner table, finishing in just four to 12 weeks. Plant homegrown cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, lettuce, and onion plants in your garden or container. Homegrown, hardy, and healthy plants are now available at Jackson. Use Fertilome Gardener Special Fertilizer for your garden, or Fertilome Blooming and Rooting Water Soluble for your containers for best production. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now. Putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by K-State Research and Extension. 
knowledge for life. Let's talk about your civic activities and uh, as you mentioned, Janet, 4-H, a big part of your youngsters growing up, and the, you as leaders, you as parents, uh, pretty much dived right into all of that, didn't you? We did. Of course, we grew up that way, and 4-H um, has benefited all of our children, not just with the activities that they were doing that they learned from, but in working with people. And, of course, everyone says this, and it's true. Being able to stand up and speak in front of a group is probably one of the most important things they learn in 4-H. You also are both deeply involved in your church and its activities. You might speak to that a moment, too. Well, my role is kind of a meal slash event planner for church. We have a Wednesday night Grace Cafe or um, Awana. Awana is a, a program for children and Grace Cafe, which that means we serve a meal every Wednesday night at church. Um, I, I have helped with that from the beginning, um, starting out organizer and, and cook for that. And uh, now I do the help with the planning and shopping. Let's visit a bit about your children. You have four youngsters who aren't so young anymore. They have their own families, of course. Uh, Juline is a homemaker, and uh, she's involved in a handful of agricultural activities as well, right? She is. Um, Juline and Joel have three young children. Um, Juline is involved with a lot of volunteer things at school. She also works with the Kansas Wheat Commission in promoting wheat and bread products and uh, plays a role with the Festival of Breads coming up. Mm -hmm. Charlotte, well, she's the youngster, and tell about her specialty. It appears she's really into the uh, musical aspect of life. She is. Charlotte is the youngest of our four, so she is gifted musically. Um, she uh, received her bachelor degree from Kansas State in piano performance and went on to uh, the College Conservatory of Music in Cincinnati um, and got her composition um, masters in composition, music composition. Um, she and her husband are in Texas right now. Um, he is working on a master's degree at SMU. Um, so she, she is a church musician and um, has her own uh, private lesson business. Now the boys. Andrew actually does work off the farm, but he, he keeps his hand in, to say the least, with the operation as well, right? Oh sure. I mean, you know, we we he's actually a part of the the cattle operation. He's has equal shares there. So and so yeah, it's uh, it was it was fun this fall to have uh, have him. He was driving the truck as well as my dad, and and I got to run the grain cart, and Aaron was running the combine. And so. He is to be on record the director of marketing and promotions for the Kansas Livestock Association and an auctioneer on the side. It's true. Yes. He has a real gift there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, Aaron, and he is farming full time with you, right? Yeah, Aaron and his wife Claire initially um, um, were in Oklahoma and, and uh, lived a couple years down there and decided they wanted to be back on the farm and so anyway they're back here raising their five girls like right across the road from us and the house where I grew up. It's nice to have them close and involved in the operation. And and you're growing the operation even as we speak. A, a brand new facility is going up to uh, better accommodate the custom agricultural services. Well it's a it's a combination. Uh, yeah, that's it. The shop that my dad and I built uh, <clears throat> we were going to add on to it and in the process of uh, looking at things we decided that we just you know, put in a whole new shop with an office and and more machinery storage, and it's it's uh, we're looking forward to being able to work out of it. Last item here, and that is what it means to you be, to be recognized as master farmer, master farm homemaker. When you received the news that you were so awarded, what was your thought? What was your reaction? Oh, it's, it's, it was just so humbling to be even nominated, and oh my goodness, we've just been so fortunate and blessed. And we've had you know <coughs> close ties with both sets of siblings, my brothers mm -hmm. and his sisters, and um, yeah, so it's a team effort. And we're, we're truly blessed. Mm -hmm. We thank, we give God all the glory. That's for sure. Thank you. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Leon and Janet Sylvester, Kansas Master Farmer, Master Farm Homemaker, Class of 2000. Roy Fry Western Lifestyles brings the cowboy or cowgirl out in all of us. With a huge selection of must-have items, it doesn't matter if you're shopping for your horse, picking up some Western accessories to add that rustic charm to your home, 
or simply treating yourself. The knowledge and expertise to dress you your Western best is right here at Roy Fry Western Lifestyles, Highway 24 and Kansas Avenue in Topeka. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Golf Week calls it the best course you can play in Kansas. But once you play, you'll want to stay. Go for it. Firekeeper Golf Course at Prairie Band Casino and Resort is just north of Topeka off Highway 75. Our stay and play package is worth the trip. Luxury hotel room, green fees, and golf cart for two, starting at just $169. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. This segment is brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. Jason, thanks for joining us this morning. You're welcome, Brian. Uh, it's been a while since I saw you. I think a wrestling tournament not too long ago. We yeah, got to spend true. some time together. <laughs> um, Blue Stem Pasture um, uh, Census going out. Uh, tell us about that, not only why it's going out, uh, but what you're hoping to gain from it. Sure. Um, the Blue Stem Pasture Survey is being sent out to about 2,200 uh, ranchers in the Flint Hills area of Kansas, uh, which is a critical area of, of the cattle industry here in Kansas. And um, it was mailed out here a, a few weeks ago. Phony has already started on the uh, Blue Stem Pasture Survey. And uh, we're going to collect information like uh, the pasture rates, rental rates. Uh, we'll be looking at how much it costs to uh, put in fencing, um, how much uh, feed and how much pasture goes for each uh, each set of cattle that type of thing so there's a lot of things that collected from the blue stem pasture that are that are important for kansas uh, the survey was done annually up until 2009 when there was some we lost some funding for that particular project uh, and it's only coming back because of data users and uh, the industries uh, realizing how important that information was and so it's coming back. Uh, we found some funding. Uh, Kansas Department of Agriculture is funding that. And so we're in, they're in cooperation with, a, with the National Ag Statistics Service uh, to get that survey collected and, and get that information out to the, to the farmers. Well, we want to remind everybody, again, it's, it's no one's trying to peek into to your operation or anything like that. It's trying to get some baseline information and find out how still important the Flint Hills are to the cattle industry here in the state of Kansas. Absolutely right. All of the data will be confidential. Uh, no one can get into the individual records. Um, it will only be summarized and published at the, uh, um, at the zone er, um, level. There'll be some zones in the Flint Hills area uh, that it'll be published at. And so no one can get to the individual records. Uh, time frame that we're talking about here, when, when should we hope everybody has that information back to your office? We plan to have it out uh, in early May, uh, probably that first week is our plan. Um, and as, as long as we get the, the questionnaires back in a timely manner from the ranchers out there, uh, I think we can make that. Um, phone call reminding people, hey, we've sent this out. Uh, please get it back to us in a timely fashion. Uh, does that work for most of these guys? Because about that time of the year, everybody gets really busy. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have a lot of things going on, those ranchers out there in, in the Flint Hills, when they uh, start, some of them will be burning off their pastures, and uh, some are getting ready to, to put some cattle in. So uh, it's going to be busy about that time. Phone calls will be, uh, be made uh, in late April, and we'll try and turn it around as fast as we can to get the, get the data out there. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas Farmers. We'll have lots more for you tomorrow on Ag AM in Kansas. We're here every weekday, same time, same station. Or look for us on the web at agamincansas.com. Eric Atkinson here from K-State Research and Extension.